and the winner of the 2012 New South Wales Nokia Business Innovation Award is Liesl Kappa. You know, I was saying to the ladies last night, I was on my fourth patent before I realised I was an innovator. And it only happened because um, the first patent I wrote was actually search engine technology. And about four years later, Google listed on the stock exchange. And then I wrote one on social media, and about three years later, Facebook became famous. And then about five years ago, I started writing patents on artificial intelligence, conversational robots. And in October last year, Apple launched Siri. And suddenly, our category, our industry was the next thing. And then I thought, whoa, OK, maybe I should think about this. Um, I think one of the things I really thought about hard before, um, you know, when I found out I was a finalist is, what is it that's different about being a woman innovator, a woman business leader that's, you know, compared to just being a man? Because we actually face a lot of the same challenges. And I think a lot of the things that are different about us are not the things we normally hear. It's not just about work-life balance, you know, even though we have fiendishly complex logistics to deal with. It's not just about working a little bit harder to get taken seriously at what you do. The thing that sets us apart and holds us back more is something that's completely within our control. And I believe that is the ability to embrace and suck up and, and radiate your own power as a human being. I was fortunate to learn this pretty young. I was, um, it was mentioned earlier that I grew up in a civil war in Central Africa. And one night I was lying. We were on an isolated farm. And um, a farm really near us had been attacked. And everyone had been brutally killed. And we thought they were coming for us, basically. And so we were all armed up. And I was told to just lie there and go to sleep. And um, I watched for about four hours the mosquito coil slowly burn. And I sat there paralyzed with fear. And at some point I thought to myself, you know what? I can either just sit here and be frozen or I can suck it up and turn it into energy. Now that's a bit of an extreme case, but I think all of us face that every day in work. Can you literally put yourself emotionally in the scenario in which you run the company you currently work for without a little frisson of fear? If you're running a company, can you picture it 10 times bigger than it is, doing 50 times the revenue, you know, managing 10 or 20 times multiplier on, on the people that you run? And that's the stuff that holds us back. A lot of us think that we just need to prove ourselves a bit more. We need to get another degree. We need to you know, go out and win another project. And we watch as other people take credit because we're not prepared to stand up and say, hey, I have power, and this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. I think I just want to wrap up. Um, with some words, when I was um, at university, I was privileged to be um, tear gassed, uh, protesting apartheid, and first learned about um, Nelson Mandela. And there was um, a speech he, he gave, which I think someone else um, wrote originally, but he said that our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant and talented and fabulous? And I say to you, who are you not to be? There is nothing enlightened about playing small so that you make those around you feel less inadequate. You're a child of God, and you're meant to shine as children do. Now, if you look that up, I probably got some of the words wrong, but that's the, the essence of, of what I believe. Thank you.